The organizing strategy of the Recovery Advocacy Project is to think and act locally on the grassroots level. Each state has a state organizing team whose purpose is to listen to people in recovery from all pathways, family members, and supporters, and then develop actions and campaigns that speak to the issues they are identifying. The experiences and barriers people in recovery have differ from county to county and state to state, and needs often change. This reality is exactly why it is so important to consistently keep our ear to the ground of the grassroots and have our finger on the pulse of the community. Empowering and engaging people to community organize is a process that takes time and focus. But bringing together people with shared interests makes advocacy and relationship building with decision makers much easier for everyone moving forward, especially when you make progress or get a victory. This video will help you get a better understanding of why it is important to keep things grassroots guided by identifying issues that affect the community, supporting the inclusion of underrepresented and marginalized individuals, and promoting community or legislative-based solutions. Before we jump right into the steps of community organizing and keeping things grassroots guided, let's talk about the significance of organizing for everybody. We can all be working towards an inclusive and diverse recovery advocacy movement. Focusing actions and campaigns that do not exclude individuals or entire communities is important for all of us to keep front and center in our organizing work. Marginalized individuals' presence, input, and voices are important and should be at the table anywhere decisions are being made. Whether we are aiming to influence public policies or attitudes, we can do that by empowering marginalized individuals to speak for themselves as opposed to speaking on their behalf. This participatory and person-centered advocacy aims to leave no one out of the conversation. Let's work together to create organizing spaces and issue campaigns that are inclusive to people of all races, ethnicities, genders, identities, pathways to recovery, sexual orientations, socioeconomic statuses, languages, ages, and abilities. Step 1. Do an assessment. The first step to organizing on a community or statewide basis is to understand potential assets, gaps, and needs. Focusing on this step first will assist you in outreach strategies to likely, and maybe some untraditional, organizing partners. The Recovery Advocacy Project encourages you to do a recovery asset and resource map by listing out organizations and individual leaders in different categories such as harm reduction, recovery support, family support, and housing, just to name a few. You should be able to identify some needs just by doing this simple exercise, and it's something you can do with others as they organize with you. A step-by-step -step guide to asset mapping can be found in the Advocacy Guide section of RecoveryVoices.com. Step 2. Listen. Organizers for the Recovery Advocacy Project have hosted countless recovery community listening sessions throughout the country. A recovery community listening forum is a guided conversation with people in recovery from all pathways, their family members and allies, that aims to identify advocacy priorities, common barriers and experiences in an effort to identify content for trainings, actions and campaigns to address those common issues. We encourage organizers to do these sessions as often as possible. This enrolls people into the organizing process and creates a welcoming platform for all to be heard and provide input into any plan of action. These sessions attract people in recovery from all pathways, people who use drugs, family members, harm reductionists, criminal justice reform advocates, mental health allies, and more. Reach out to your RAP State organizing team if you want some guidance on how to host a listening session. Step 3. Be clear in setting a collective goal. Once you've identified who your people are and what they care about, the next step is to build consensus around corresponding goals. Together, you can map out exactly what it is that you want to achieve. Solicit input from people with different experiences and points of views so the goals are shared. 
The goal should be realistic, manageable, and achievable. Try working together to set a goal that inspires and challenges people but is not impossible to attain. This is also a good time to work on messaging and map out steps that will help meet the goals set. Step 4. Strategize and create some actions and campaigns. The Recovery Advocacy Project has a number of digital tools that you can use to organize in your state and community, including letter writing campaigns, organizing events, or creating petitions. Other actions, depending on the organizing strategy, could include organizing rallies, taking part in town hall meetings, testifying on legislation, marches, media advisories, or op-ed campaigns. Please contact your state organizing team or go to recoveryvoices.com to access some of these tools. Step 5. Foster and develop more organizers to help realize the goals set out. The Recovery Advocacy Project subscribes to the idea of distributed leadership. If we recognize that every individual in this movement adds value, can teach and learn something, and can be an asset to others, then we can see the benefits of distributed leadership. We all come to this because we want to help others, harm no one, and we find our place in this movement at our own pace. Let's commit to fostering spaces that are welcoming for all to develop their organizing and leadership skills. This also prevents advocacy fatigue and puts more trust in each other as an organized constituency instead of in any one individual. If we continue to tell our stories, advocate for the changes that are necessary, we will find others with the willingness and the time to help with organizing responsibilities. Now that you have some basics and background of proven organizing strategies, practice and teach these steps to others. What can happen in one community has the capability to have a ripple effect in other communities and even across the country, which can help people you may never even meet. Let's continue to listen and learn from one another to build a stronger recovery advocacy movement. For more tools and resources, visit www.recoveryvoices.com.